Steven versus Amethyst. Round one. Fight! <laughs> so on this episode, Pearl and Garnet come back to find out what the fuck just happened. <laughs> yeah, I like how Pearl was so worried and yet so proud of Steven for all that. Oh, it was adorable. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it was. So this was the Steven versus Amethyst, as you might have guessed. So in this episode, uh, Amethyst, because of the events of the last episode, Amethyst decides to join Steven in Pearl's new training. Steven and Amethyst compete in a few exercises to see who is better without e- without Steven realizing that's what's going on, really. And Amethyst is frustrated that Steven continually wins at these and seems to be better than her. And she's even more frustrated when Steven lets her win in a fighting game. <laughs> Which was not the best call. Not really, no. Eventually, both of them angrily and bizarrely end up saying that they themselves are the worst and that they need to fight to see who is actually the worst. They have a very fun energetic battle and a very close one where they destroy parts of the arena, but eventually they both fall down and give up. I suppose they understand each other a bit more after all that. And then Pearl comes in and sees all the mess and is angry. That was the episode. It was less sad than I thought it would be. Which was a relief, and it didn't end with Jasper showing up randomly to be a creeper. <laughs> she have just appeared. She should have just appeared out of nowhere, said hi, and just left. Just crawled out of the rubble and gone. Rose. <laughs> just slap her. Just head slowly disappear. Yep, and then just backs away off the edge of the arena. Yeah. Oh, just, I start off the episode, I have like five notes in a row that are just, why is nobody hugging Amethyst and making sure she's okay? Yeah. Yeah, Amethyst deserves all the hugs. I mean, she got poofed and reformed. Surely you at least give her a hug for that. Yeah. Though to be fair, she seems like the type of character that would be annoyed if someone hugged her just after that. Probably, but oh, Poor baby. Uh... <laughs> I love when uh, Amethyst was, like, putting the eggs into, like, the drain or whatever it is called. Uh, it's is, is it one of those American sinks that has, like, knives in it for destroying things? Kind of, yeah. Okay, so she's put yeah, she's putting eggs in that and saying she's making egg salad. <laughs> <laughs> and I love Pearl trying to explain. Now that Jasper has returned, <laughs> and she just keeps getting out interrupted and gives up her, like, elaborate thing. And she just screams, Jasper's back, let's work hard! <laughs> <laughs> it was great. I know. I just, oh. Okay, the Pearl points, though. <laughs> Pearl is your, Pearl is your hyper-enthusiastic primary one teacher. In an, in an absolute nutshell. Except teaching people to fight. Yes. Which none of my school teachers did, which could have come in handy if they had. <laughs> but no, she's so hyper-enthusiastic, and I'm just, oh. It's her adorable little kind of stickers. Yeah, the whole pearl stickers, oh my god. And the pearl and the prize pouch, oh my god, that's so cute. Yes. I don't even need glasses, so it's funny. <laughs> oh. I just, I also felt really sad that she didn't, she thought Amethyst was deliberately doing badly to make Good job, Pearl, better. good job. I just, oh, Pearl, no, I know you're trying, but oh. <laughs> Amethyst. <laughs> uh, poor, poor Amethyst. I also, I feel like Pearl's hair has changed recently. Like it's a bit scruffier than it used to be, or something. I don't know. It's just like she has these little scruff wings at the side that have just kind of been there recently. I don't think we were there before. <laughs> I don't, maybe I'm only just now noticing her hair. I don't spend that much time staring at Pearl's hair. <laughs> <laughs> that was a very specific denial. <laughs> I mean, I, I apparently spend more time than I realize staring at Amethyst's hair. Huh. Oh no, it's oh it's the the bit when Amethyst and Steve were practice Steve were practice fighting the first time. I called him Steve because he has a bit where he throws the shield. I'm like, did he just pull a Captain America move? <laughs> I I mean, his name is Steve. Yes. I right, does wear stars. Yes. I think we're on to something here. Mm. I also kind of love how it's transparently a GameCube that he has, but I also feel sad and pained that that's a vintage console now. Yeah. I feel old. It used to be all cartoon characters had Nezes, because that was like the vintage recognizable yes. console. And now it's a GameCube. <laughs> uh, GameCube isn't that old. It's old and so are we. Oh, you liar. <laughs> Actually, I did, uh, someone did, uh, 
point out that it actually says uh, on the at least the controller it says Dolphin, which I believe was actually the code name <laughs> for the GameCube. Oh my god, I never noticed that. That's fantastic. No, I remember that Project Dolphin because it's so much fun. I think was the rationale. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even uh, kidding, I'm pretty sure that was it. <laughs> it is an alternate universe. <laughs> well, that was... Oh, God, yeah, imagine the, the project name was Project GameCube, and finally they revealed a Nintendo Dolphin. <laughs> oh, my God, that... Oh, that's beautiful. Yes, that'd be awesome. And then they had to end up seeing, the, end up seeing uh, Star Wars Episode Six: Revenge of the Jedi. <laughs> Is, or is this the one where the first three Star Wars movies were terrible, but then they made prequels that were really, really good? <laughs> that, that would be hilarious. In this universe, everything you know is wrong. <laughs> Jar Jar Binks is as charismatic as Captain Jack Sparrow. <laughs> All the Transformers movies are masterpieces of cinema while Guillermo del Toro keeps cranking out absolute shit. <laughs> Yes. The DC animated universe is doing incredibly well, but Marvel keeps trying too hard to be dark. <laughs> Carrie Fisher had the most successful continuous acting career after the first Star Wars movie. <laughs> yes. Where did that Han Solo guy after this go, anyway? I don't know. Oh, he's just turned up again for the new one. He hasn't had any jobs <laughs> in between. Uh, yeah. And the whole world has been taken over by Digimon phone games. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we've gone too far for this now. <laughs> we've gone too deep. Yeah, we have to get we out. We have to get out. It's before it's too late. On a more serious note, just after Steven throws the fight and, you know, Amethyst completely knows that he did it, and they, I just... A thing I continue to love about Steven Universe is the huge amounts of emotional openness that go on between the characters. Yes. Like, Amethyst doesn't keep being mad and taking out on Steven without saying why yes, she's I, mad. Yes, I was so worried that this was going to be a let's make everyone mad at each other episode. A.K.A. the one that no one likes ever. Nobody ever likes that episode because yes. it's always everyone mad at each other for reasons of no communication. But there's a lot of communication. Yes. So. The characters openly telling each other how they feel about things, what's hurting them, you know. Which, again, is just such a great thing to instill in children. Yes. But, but, you know, casual mind, it's the target audience of the show. But it is such a great thing to just constantly be reminding children things go better if you're open about your feelings to the people you care about. Yeah. Just, you know, and it it does lead to them having, like, another fight, but it's it's such an interesting mix in this fight, like, the bit, the bit where Steven pulls off a new bubble move, and uh, Amethyst is like, is that new? Because it's awesome! <laughs> you know, she's so, you know, it's like she's she, so angry. She looks so angry, but she yells that. It's so great. They're complimenting each other angrily all the way through the fight. Like, they're so... They're going on about how each other is so much cooler in the whole fight. Yes. And it's just... Also, Amethyst cute in a ponytail. That's adorable. Yes. Yes, she is. <laughs> Honestly, that, that's actually something I like to do sometimes. Like, you know the joke where you say, Your face is something something. I like to do that, but, like, positively. <laughs> Your face is great. <laughs> oh, it's, it's that reverse Tourette's thing it's like you dirty backstabbing son of a hey nice shoes <laughs> no I think you're really clever and have a lot of interesting points about this cartoon <laughs> no you're a far better talker than I ever could be no but you're so much better at remembering continuous details of the show damn it <laughs> that's only because I write them down my memory isn't that good I can't even remember the names of episodes I just watched okay good point I won <laughs> just, oh. oh, I also love the bit where Amethyst shapeshifts into her like wrestling persona again. Yes. I was, I'm kind of sad we didn't start doing this back when those episodes were coming out because I know you. You I, like I don't know a lot about wrestling, but I know you do. Yeah. So I was always wondering how how good that wrestling that episode was to a wrestling fan. <laughs> it, it was pretty good, though. Though I'm half convinced they've never watched wrestling past like the early nineties. <laughs> Because, like, it was a very, it was an intentionally 80s thing. You know, like, <laughs> like Stephen even had, like, the, like, really old cell phones that are giant. <laughs> well, you know, and the obvious detail that they're actually fighting each other. Yeah, that was cute. And I love how it got cute at the end when Pearl and Garnet show up and they just get involved in the whole thing of it. 
Oh, good times. At the end of this episode, episode, it's just Pearl who shows up and she doesn't get involved. (laughs) You've ruined the ruins! (laughs) Yes. Which, on the one hand, is an objectively funny line, but on the other hand, as someone who has worked in Lidwell Ruins, oh, I know the rage. (laughs) I can imagine. It's like, this shit is 800 years old and we can barely look after it as it is. Stop chipping bits off as a fucking souvenir. (laughs) Like, seriously, you ever go see some old shit, do not chip bits off as a fucking souvenir. This is why, even when though you have to pay a bloody fortune to get tickets to Stonehenge, you can't go anywhere fucking near it anymore. Because people kept chipping bits off. Oh. Don't ruin ruins, people. <laughs> this, has been, this has been a PSA. The more you know. <laughs> I did love when it just suddenly had the spike bubble thing. Like... Yeah. At, at this point, I feel like Steven's powers have a sort of uh, video game-iness to it, especially like sort of like Metroidvania games, because because this it felt like just like a Metroidvania game. Now Steven has a spike ball. Now he can go up walls to get to new areas of this place. <laughs> I think it's cute that he got the spike ball in the fight with Amethyst, because that seems like it was clearly a subconscious response to her spiky whip and spiky weapons, huh. which is pretty cool. Yeah. But it does remind me of that bit in early Sailor Moon where it was like she had a new power in every single fight. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I actually, it is also funny that he had her, Steven's bubble turns into like just, just surrounded by spikes and it's not even used for like any fighting. It's just to stick to a wall. <laughs> <laughs> and I just love how Steven's bubble, because of Steven's defensive powers, and now he, he has a spiky ball of. He could just like kill people. That's, I'm sure that's not what they meant by the best defense is a good defense, but, you know, it works. <laughs> a good defense with spikes. Yeah. He's going to roll down a hill someday, and it's going to destroy so many cars. <laughs> oh, collateral damage. And, the, and then at the end, it goes back to the whole emotional openness thing I love, which is like, Amethyst, the bit that caused me actual physical pain is Amethyst is saying, you know, she's not what she's supposed to be, and Steven says, well, I'm not either. I'm not Rose Quartz. And I went, oh, Steven, at exactly the same moment Amethyst yeah, did, because, uh, oh, Steven. It's just, that's dark shit for a kid to be thinking, you know. Yes, it is. But I, thought, I think that might be the first time he's actually mentioned any of the Crystal Gems, that he feels guilt or pressure for being, like, not purposefully, but sort of the reason Rose Quartz is gone. Yeah. Like, I think that's the first time he's mentioned it to any of them, so I hope that kind of leads to something in the future. Yeah. Though, uh, what I got out of it more was that he's just super worried about not being able to live up to her legacy. Yeah, that too, because that is a hell of a big pair yeah. of shoes to fill. You know, at, at least 5,000 years of being this alien rebellion queen. Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot to live up to. Yeah, that might be, be a quite a bit of pressure. Don't press your kids to be just as good as their parents. Especially not when their parents are an alien warrior <laughs> queen. Yeah, especially not then. So I'm not sure when that will come up in real life. You never know. I got nothing else to say about this one. It just ends on sadness. Yeah. <laughs> and rage about ruins. <laughs> I, I did, actually, I thought it was cute. It was cute, but in a, oh, babies, in a way. Yeah. <laughs> I, d- I did love how after, after they fell down, they just laughed at how ridiculous they were being. <laughs> oh, that was so cute. That was so cute. Ah. <sighs> So there are other, there are actually a few other good jokes I liked. Uh, for some reason, I really liked when Steven defeated four uh, hollow pearls at once, and it just echoed, Defeat, 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 accept, accept it. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was pretty good. <laughs> and I d- it does amuse me how long it took Pearl to realize that maybe the hologram pearls shouldn't be deadly. <laughs> yeah, it's like you only now changed it to non-lethal settings? Um, <laughs> maybe this would be a good idea to change this. I wish I'd done that before you started training a small human child who can't poof and reform. <laughs> Pearl didn't think this all the way through. She did not. I I did love at the end, uh, with Steven just playing the fighting game, and they don't say a word, except he has, like, a jester hat on now, that he won. <laughs> and they don't ever, they don't ever reference it, he's just wearing it. 
Where did that hat come from and why? Why not? Jester hat. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I, I did like the video game. <laughs> like, looking through the character list. The characters, there's a character called Bombo Bomb Bombo Bomb. <laughs> and there was this guy named, named, uh, made out of wood, and his name was Gwood Guy. <laughs> Totally. I, actually, I can't slag that as character name, and that's about as creative as fighting games usually get. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's kind of true. <laughs> Good guy looked exactly like this character from Tekken, by the way. <laughs> Tekken actually <laughs> has a guy who's basically a tree guy. But not Groot. Not Groot. Sadly. Everything would be better with Groot in it. Yes. Join us next time for more d- talking awkwardly about gay space roles. Hooray! Hooray!